Well, you know, you know what I'm saying? So now I'm about to go clock, clock in. in. You know you can. I'm about to go clock in right now. You just push the, you know what I mean? Like, how do yeah. you keep the motivation like through that? Senior year right what are you now. really training for? And it, and it becomes difficult. So I try to really bridge the gap and make them understand that every time it gets pushed back, that gives you a little bit more time to be ready. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, so the only mistake would be to not take advantage of the time. And then when the season does start, you're not completely dominating everything that happens on that right. field or court. Because if you take advantage of the time, when you get there, people, you should be unrecognizable. <laughs> yeah. People should be going, man, where did you come from? Who are you? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not the same player we had yeah. last year. No, we're not. Because I just had a year and a half to get ready. Yeah, and I worked my butt off. <laughs> you know what I mean? So so that's the mindset. And if we keep that, we all win. Mm -hmm. we and all how win big sure. is, like, you guys do, like, sections in here and then you rotate them out here? Or how has that been? Well, that's all up to the trainers, man. And really, it, we, we do a lot of uh, sport-specific works, a lot of lateral movement, a lot of functional movement and then of course functional strength training mm -hmm. so i mean in a, in a one day workout you probably touch the turf you're touching the plyo boxes the weights you know pretty much everything depending on what the focus is for that day for sure and what would you say is like the one thing that if you don't have this part of your life that everything else is going to be out of off track um discipline 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 is the key mm -hmm. you know what i mean discipline to me is really the answer to all your all your questions you know meaning if you have the right discipline and you're able to stay focused on your goal through all the ups and downs and obstacles and ins and outs mm -hmm. then you're ultimately going to accomplish it and because discipline is not a very easy i mean it sounds no, very difficult right so how yeah. do you teach people to be disciplined because just getting to the gym is usually the hardest part right yep yeah, so, and so how do you like, listen, man, if you can get disciplined, how do you train them on that aspect for the mental part? Well, here, here's the baseline, and this is the extreme version. You know, this is my version. This is how I look at it. I mean, sometimes you got to go to the extreme. A lot of yeah. people don't have the same brain I have. I get it. However, my brain is this. Discipline, the definition of discipline is death of all other options. Ooh. That's the, de the definition of discipline is death of all other options meaning there are no other choices. Mm -hmm. So if I say, I want to go D1, yeah, let's just, you just stay right. on that, on that exactly. lane. Uh -huh. I want to go D1. So if you want to go D1, if you're serious about it, then there are no other option. Mm -hmm. You have to figure out how to go D1. And if you're, and if there's no other options, then every single one of your actions and steps have to align with that choice. Mm -hmm. Anything that doesn't align with that choice, you're not being true to yourself, not to your parents, not to your coach, not to your trainer. You're not looking in the mirror and being real with yourself. When I told people in 2003 that phase one was going to work, when everyone said it wouldn't, mm -hmm. when everyone was like, it's a hobby, something you should do on the weekends. And it. It was logical, right? Some it sounds like something you should right. do on the weekend, but that's like a scary point. Meet me at the too, park right? mm -hmm. on Saturday, sounds like a weekend job, mm -hmm. but I committed and was disciplined enough at that moment to say, I'm gonna make it work. So it was no other option, I had to make it work 17 years later. Yeah, I still have no to make it work, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so that's my definition, man. That's, that's I'm ready to run wrong. through a brick wall, bro. Let's Damn, go man. We, we, we got a brick wall right back in the baby. It's all about him, yeah. Straight off, just strike right, right. You know what he's doing a little bit. Right. Look like he had a little juice, be a little something behind him. So he wasn't just talking. Yeah. So, anniversary of Kobe coming up, uh, death of Kobe. What did Kobe mean to Is you? Anniversary already? I think like yeah. next week or something like that. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, wow. I feel like that was just was like. crazy, man. Man, I feel like that was so recent, man, because it was so. It, it was just such a huge impact, man, on the whole world. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I, what I love, and, and I'll be real with you. Throughout the career, you know, I'm Michael Jordan all day, yeah, every day. MJ, I'm, I'm MJ till it's over. <laughs> However, so throughout Kobe's career, if I could be honest, I wasn't the biggest fan, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the reason being is because the, the Black Mamba concept and everything, I felt like he had that where he created the alter ego to become the Black Mamba. Gotcha. And I feel like Jordan just woke up with it. Uh -huh. That was always my battle. Just this has is a, created Jordan. I'm, Jordan this is, is me. If I'm up, I'm the Mamba. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I'm asleep, that's the only time uh, you can get up. Cape on or nothing, there's no uh -huh. cape, there's no phone booth to change in. <laughs> this, this is who I am. So, so that was a big part. So now fast forward to when Kobe retired from basketball, mm -hmm. that's when all the information started coming out. 
that's when the videos came out. The testimonies from other players that he battled against, mm -hmm. the, the intensity at practice, the, the, the interviews from the coaches of his mindset, the stories of missing a shot and, and staying in the gym till midnight after a game Getting to up get up. Like when you start hearing that as a trainer and as a performance guy and as an athlete, I'm like, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. There's I a get reason it. why he was I the black mamba, huh? I get, the, I get it. Mm -hmm. He cultivated that in every single sense of the word. And, and that's where I really had the highest level of respect. And that allowed me to go back and look at what he's accomplished and go, okay. He I, did his I thing, get it. right? I get it. And so the death, uh, and, and it's crazy because that was my world, that was my experience was how I felt initially, mm -hmm. how it changed. And, and it was only a short period of time. Short period of time. Mm -hmm. And then he passed away. And he passed away at four, if I'm not mistaken, 42, 42 years old, 41 so, or 42. We were the same age. Oh, no way. So, I, so the headline was Dang. like, Kobe Bryant passes away at 41. I think it was 41 or 42. 41, it was like, I had just turned 41. Mm -hmm. So it was like, imagine it being over today. Wow. And it was like, so that just put it all really in perspective for me, man. And, and, and it just made me that much hungrier to just keep doing what we're doing and help people, man, whether it's for one more day or, or 100 more years. It's, right. We don't know. Mm -hmm. You better live the last. We don't know. Each second like it's your last, you right? You have to. have to, yeah. How important is being a student athlete? Like, being a student first, how important is that education? Um, I mean, for, for athletes in general, when you, when you talk about student athletes, the biggest gap is the academic versus the athleticism. Everyone wants to work on being an athlete. Everybody wants to run faster, jump higher. Everybody wants to train, everybody wants to abs, everybody wants to get buff, I get it. However, not everyone wants to apply the same focus to the academic side of it. And that's usually where everything goes wrong. For my personal story, that's where it went wrong. I had two scholarship offers out of high school, but I, my GPA was a 2.2. The reason it was a 2.2 is because I needed a 2.0 to be eligible. So at the end of the day, just getting by. I was huh? the one friend that was always eligible. <laughs> so they looked at me as the smart guy. Right. I was the smart one on the team. Like Mike, we don't have to worry about. Passing, we don't have to worry about his grade. Yeah, he got he it. All my coaches were nervous about everyone else. Mm -hmm. So by but by having that mentality that just doing just enough to get by, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and two point two, not understanding the ACT SAT, not understanding that it's a sliding scale. Meaning the higher your GPA, the lower your test score has to be. These are things gotcha. that people just don't know. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know. And I had no phase one right. to teach me that. Because a lot of kids just go through high school playing their kid. Parents just drop them off yep. to practice yep. and don't know even know what's and, happening. And parents are like, oh, yeah, they're going to college. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. And what are your thoughts on reading? On oh, reading? Mm -hmm. Like how many books you, you, do the person You know read? what? And it, it's the thing, man. I'm not even a numbers guy on books. Here, here's, here's the gap. To me, we can classify it as reading or whatever, however you want to isolate it. Something. But here's what it is. Athletes, to me, I think one of the, and, and I'll be blunt, I don't even have kids, but I'll still say it the way I feel it. Um, the mistake parents are making, the mistake that parents are making, especially with young athletes, is they're not forcing them to have dedicated focus time. Mm. When they're doing their homework, they let them do their homework, TV's on, the game's on noise everywhere mm -hmm. so they're kind of in there but they're not really focused on it uh right now with the quarantine going on there is no real school structure so but they're not taking the time to say hey two hours a day you are going to read mm -hmm. let's go find a book two hours a day you are going to study even if it's a subject you want to study right i don't care what it is who's the best running <laughs> yeah. back in the nfl history yeah. well go study it uh -huh. go watch the youtube videos mm -hmm. listen to the interviews because i feel like the biggest problem with athletes is young athletes they don't know when it's time to focus and dial in. Mm. They don't have any experience wow. focusing and dialing right. in. Uh -huh. And so- and, With and the phones all the with time, the phone, TV. Every, multitasking, everything's a swipe, everything's fast, everything's moving. Nothing slows down and says focus. Wow, just one mind, man, just, one mind. What about this? Mm -hmm. And so when they get to school or they get to that coach, and that coach is like, hey, man, focus, focus. <laughs> the kid's like, I am focused. Yeah, I don't even know how because to focus. Because focus to me means Nothing. It's I'm everything. multitasking. Everything. Mm -hmm. And so I think if, if parents just isolated time throughout the course of every day, you know, at least five, six days a week to say, hey, for two hours a day, you're going to you're going to sit down and do something. Mm -hmm. 
something constructive. You can even pick it, but you can pick right. it. It doesn't God, matter. It's, it's not about saying you're going to read this book. It's <laughs> yeah. about saying, hey, what are you going to read? What mm -hmm. book do you like? What, what do you want to read next? Because right. that brings backlash. Like, I don't want to read that damn book. Well, yeah. You now gotta it's do something. Exactly. Find something they're interested mm -hmm. in, but then make sure they have that dedicated time. And then you'll notice that kid will be able to focus better. Mm -hmm. Attention span will go up. Grades will improve. Everything will get better because now they have an understanding of how to dial in. When someone says, hey, it's time to focus, they're going to go, yes, sir. I'm there. I'm focused. Mm -hmm. Because they know how to do it. <laughs> I've been trained on that. Yeah, right? How has social media affected the student athlete? Um, good and bad. There's definitely good and bad, good you and know. Bad. It's I think some of the positives are this. You know, when I was in high school, for example, I really was hungry, hungry to learn, hungry to be a better athlete. Uh, so I remember anybody that was in my community that played sports, I'm always picking their brain. What can mm -hmm. I do? Uh, I had a, I had a, um, I ran into Eddie George. Uh oh. And this is back when he was just coming into the NFL, and he told me to jump rope. I asked him, I'm a running back too. Mm -hmm. What can I do to get better? He said jump rope. Literally speaking, literally speaking. I went and got a jump rope from Kmart, because that's how old I am. <laughs> I got it from Kmart. Hey, I used to work there, bro. Kmart is dope. Uh, Kmart is dope. Blue Light Special. Blue Light like Special, baby. Blue Light like Special. Man. I love Kmart. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's one of my childhood memories. You know how many times I got lost in a Kmart? <laughs> and my mom couldn't find me for two hours? Uh, okay. They get on so, the speakerphone. Yeah, oh, they do. Uh, your mother is at the front. I'm in the toy section. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> look, I don't forgot what I was <laughs> Jump rope. Jump rope. Yeah, jump rope. <laughs> jump rope from Kmart. <laughs> So, so yeah. Eddie George told me about the jump rope, right? <laughs> so when he told me about the jump rope, I went and got one. And literally every single night, I would jump rope for like 20, 30, 45 minutes. It got to the point where when the weather shifted, I even learned how to jump rope in my room. <laughs> Ceiling fan above. Yeah. If you extend your arms out wider, the rope stays tighter. <laughs> and so I could jump rope in my room. And that's a better workout for the shoulders. And here's too. how I looked at it. As a young kid at 16, I looked at it like this. If it hit the fan, that means I got lazy and I brought my arms oh, in. So that was a sign. Uh -huh. And my mom would yell every single time. <laughs> what the <laughs> hell are you <laughs> doing in there? What are, what are you doing? You better not be breaking that. And I'm, I'm like, yeah. nope, yep, sorry. I do nothing, mom. Right? So, so my point to that is this when i was 16 i was starving for information mm -hmm. now these athletes have it all at their fingertips i mean even on our youtube channel i've posted at least four or five hundred complete training What's the programs YouTube channel give a shout it's, out uh, to youtube youtube youtube.com forward slash phase one sports um and and basically phase one online is the link if you go to phase one online.com it'll link you to pretty much everything we got so that's what I look at now and I go, man, you guys have everything. Mm -hmm. If a kid says, I want to get faster, you can go to YouTube, type in, I want to get faster. <laughs> Enter. And you're going to get 3,000 videos, 3 million videos, mm -hmm. of, and some quality trainers, some good people. Yeah, some stuff on there that may not be as valuable, right. but there's a lot of good. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the gift is they have access to everything. I think the downside is when you have access to everything, it really doesn't make you desire much. Wow, that's powerful. Right you see there. what I'm saying? Uh -huh. if, if I give uh -huh. you $100 million, are you going to go out and try to make another exactly. million? Exactly. Uh -huh. People really don't maybe, value free too much. Maybe you know? not. It's crazy like that, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's free. I don't know why it happens like that, but a lot yeah. of people just look at it like, well, if I ain't, that ain't nothing yeah. to me. You got to yep. have a little skin in the game. 100%. How have you seen that? Like, well, if they don't have any skin in the game, they're not going to give 110%. Um, to, to me, it really still comes down to each athlete. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I have some, I mean, I've seen it all now, you know, doing this for years. I have a couple athletes that, that are popping up in my head right now that have everything. Right. Parents, major money, multi-millionaire, like family's good, mm -hmm. they're good. College is paid for, whether they play a sport or not, they're good but they come in here and they bust their butt every single day. You would not even know it. You'd be like, dude, that might be one of the hardest working kids <laughs> yeah, in the program. He's a beast. And then you find out like, oh wait, mom is, or dad is, whoa, mm -hmm. okay. But then I have a other side of the coin. I have some that are coming here and they're entitled. They feel like we owe them something. They feel like it's a privilege for us to be able to right. train them so they can come in and have an attitude or not. You know what I mean? It's exactly. Like, so there's really no common factor in it. I think it's just more or less each individual. Some are just, some are built with the hunger. Mm -hmm. Some just have it naturally. They, they're born with it. Others have to develop it. You know, over time, they learn the work, the ethic, um, maybe even the results. They see their body changing, mm -hmm. see them getting faster. And now they want to invest more and more and more. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's that. And then other times it's just, 
We never get it out yeah. of them. Yeah, sorry, brother. You <laughs> we just, just don't, don't have it. it. Right. I'm sorry. So I got some questions for you. Go ahead. Look, look, let's look at it. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> let's get it. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, he is. He do need a lot. Uh, so <laughs> get home like, uh, oh, oh my god! Oh my god! That 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 uh, one commercial with oh, yeah, Aquaman. He's he just off. taking all your. Uh, so uh, I can't drink. No, no, no. You are supposed to do that 1993 light. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. <Taste> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, rain is dope, though. I like rain. <laughs> so. Saying, hey, come over here. Mm -hmm. You can shine. I already got people in the league. Yeah. Whether they're coaches, managers, scouts, everything. Mm -hmm. I got it all lined up. Come, yeah. come with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think naturally, I think his name and his influence mm -hmm. is, is going to get it off the ground. Yeah. But I, deep inside, I, I want to say that it's going to be very difficult to sustain. Okay because of it's such a big deficit between some of the HBCUs and, and the Alabamas and yeah. the Clemsons and them. It's a big space between. Okay. So so my thought would be this. I love the concept of it. I, I know there's a lot of value in doing it. Where I think Dion or whoever's involved with this with this journey, with this yeah. mission, you gotta also focus on the funding and the boosters. Right. You gotta bring in those businesses, mm -hmm. you know, those multi-million dollar, even the black owned businesses yeah. and say, hey, we're trying to turn this into this. Right. We need your support. Right. We need your contribution. Exactly. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna have some very open-minded young athletes that are like, you know what, I wanna explore this opportunity. Oh. They're more culture connected. Uh, they see what's going on in our communities with Black Lives Matter and everything that yeah. we have going on. So they're going to be motivated to say, let me go check out this HBCU. Right. But then it's also going to be the ones that's just shiny. Right. They're just shiny. They want to go where the national championships have been the last five years. Exactly. You know what I mean? They mm -hmm. want to go to SC because it's SC. That's right. where whoever played. You know right. what I mean? That's the schools, the Florida's, Florida State. I mean, what young athlete in Florida doesn't want to be a Seminole yeah. when you think about Brooks and Dion and all these guys? Exactly. So that's really where the battle is going to be. So I think the battle on individual athletes can be won. I think he'll win two out of ten, three out of ten, which is yeah. great, which is significant. Right. However, the gap to me is going to be, can you bring the funding into those schools? To match what they... To match it. Yeah. So that way when, they, when the athletes come in, that college... Because really it's the college experience. Yeah. I played at UNLV. The most we had in our, in our stadium, I want to say, was 32,000, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it was 32,000. I can't say that all 32,000 were for us. <laughs> because, <laughs> because I think we were playing uh, Wisconsin. Oh, okay, so I think yeah. yeah. 30,000 was probably for them. But... Uh, <laughs> Y'all no, showed out, though. I, I, we played there. <laughs> I, I was on the team the last time we went to the bowl game and all that. So I actually had a good time at UNLV. So my point is this. 32,000. Right. You go to the Coliseum. SC versus UCLA. 102,000. Right. As a young athlete that has the the mindset of bigger and NFL and next level and I'm elite and I'm a five star and I got 40 offers. Right. Are you going to are you going to uh, uh, yeah. HB to where there's 4,000 people at the game? Right. Maybe 5,000. Big game with Battle of the Bands. 22,000. Yeah. yeah, I've been to one of those. It's pretty, oh, and it's live. Yo, it's uh, live. I, I I went down there. Shout out to New Orleans. Yeah. Is a hey, best time you'll ever have down there, you know. Just yeah, I went to one in Tennessee, that Ooh. was crazy. It, it's, it's beautiful, and, it, and from a culture standpoint, yeah. it's perfect. Yeah, but if you're just a football player and you're not worried about the band, you'd rather run out the tunnel at the Coliseum with a hundred thousand people screaming to watch the game, <laughs> right? If you had an HBCU, you got 20,000 people screaming for the band, band and, coming out. <laughs> and don't even care about the game, right? Man. Right, right. Literally, right. I know people that wasn't even paying attention. It's like, oh, it's halftime. Everybody stands oh, they up. Oh, they just did a touchdown. You're like, so I'm waiting yeah, for the band. Like, I'm waiting for that bass. Everybody to come stood up at halftime. Yeah. It threw me off. I was like, what? Everybody going to the snack bar? <laughs> I thought everybody was going to the snack bar at the same time. I'm like, right. snack bar? they like, no. Battle. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, this is it. Hype. Right. Hype. So, you know, it, so yeah. And, and, that's, and, then, and that's big, you know, coming out. Because you had uh, the brother that was like one of the, I think he was in the top 10 for basketball. I was going to Howard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. so it seems like, and then and then you got our vice president now because yep. let's look at the time. Oh yeah, yeah. she been, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, she. Um, how do you, how do you, you know, if I say, hey, I'll coach, I want to, I want to go to D one. Mm -hmm. How do you, 
do you ask them like they dream list or do you ask them you know do you try to tailor more like okay what do you want to study what i do is this i, I have them start with a list and then they create that list, and then it's their job to research that out and, and explain to me why they selected those schools. I have a couple athletes doing it right now. Um, so basically we started with top 10. Okay. And then literally just by nature, I said, okay, cool. I like the 10, but now narrow it down. What's your top five? Okay. Because your list shouldn't be 10 at this stage. Yeah. If you're six months from going, from deciding what school, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be at 10 still. Right. If you're a freshman, sophomore, 10, 20, 15, whatever. Yeah. But at this point, top five. Right. Now their homework is, which I'm waiting for their response now is, taking that, those top five, and then breaking them down. What's the roster look like? What, um, what majors do they offer? Do right. they offer what you're looking for? Are you undecided? You know what I mean? Do you right. even know what you want to study to where we can factor that in? Right. Uh, how many running backs are there if you play running back? You know what I mean? What grade are they in? See, and, and most people don't even do that. They're yeah. like, okay, what school you want to go they to? They just show up. I, I want to go to U of A. Yeah. Well, well why? And like, mean, what's the why? And, and you might- running backs, yeah, running exactly. back. Now you're up there stuck for four years. Exactly. You know, so being able to understand that, what kind of offense do they run? What right. kind of defense do they run? Does that fit who you are? Right. You know what I mean? I always go to the coach's roster to see, do we have any connections? Yeah. Oh, this coach, he's, okay. Oh, wait, he was from Vegas. You know what I mean? Is yeah. there anything I can pinpoint where I could call or email that coach to go, hey, this is Mike. I'm out in Vegas. I'm really interested in your school. And he goes, oh, man, I love Vegas. Just to see if we could pinpoint it. Okay. Location. How far away is it from home? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Are you the type that's going to be homesick? Or are you the type that's trying to get furthest away possible? Is your mom and dad want to be at every single they, home game? Do they want to go to every on? game? Yeah. Where they can drive to Arizona or drive yeah. to California, but they can't drive to Wisconsin? Yeah. Or, or does that not matter? to right. where you can go all the way to Notre Dame and it not be a big deal. Right. You know what I mean? Like, okay. that's the stuff that they have to factor in. And then when they narrow down that top five, usually by the time they get done with the research, it's down to about two. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, two I, three, I, I they get go, you. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Oh, yeah, that is far. Boom. Okay, these are the three. Okay. And I now like we dial in on those. Now, now I do have to say something. <laughs> I already I know, where you, look, already look, know where you're about look, to go. Look, look. I'm going to look this way. Look, look. I see some love for the linemen on here. And it was, you know, <laughs> we got a couple. Because a lot of spots, they, they, you know, skilled players. Yeah. You you being a running back, mm -hmm. skilled players get a lot of love. But D-line, you know, it, yeah. it, 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 it's, it's, you know, a lot of power, a lot of mm -hmm. momentum and, and, yep. and endurance yep. and stuff like that. How, you know, a lot of facilities are like, well, I train a lot of wide receivers. I train a lot of quarterbacks. Yeah. We, but to see the the stuff here for the linemen also, yeah. would, would you know, a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. So, so how do you train? Which what, what makes phase one? If 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 I'm looking for a place here in Vegas, shout out to Vegas, Clark County. You know, what makes me choose you instead of anybody else? Um, I think I think for phase one is is number one we've been doing this longer than anybody in town, period. Number two, you know this is a purpose and passion for me. This is not a business. This in in reality, in reality, full transparency, I can figure out a way in ten days to make more money than I make doing what I do. However, this is what I love doing, so I've been doing it for almost eighteen years. So that's that's number two. Okay. And then the other part of it is we are the most versatile at what we do. That's why we could have, uh, we had 52 uh, NFL players training with us last offseason. 52. Okay. About 20 something, 22, 23 were Raiders because they had just moved to town. Yeah. And then the rest were just from all over, whether it be local kids from Vegas that are home yeah. or NFL athletes that just love Vegas and they want to move here. Right. You know right, what I mean? So right. we have 50. So in order to be able to do that, you got to have programs for line, O-line, D-line, receivers. You know, I think the only position that we did not work with was quarterback. You know, and, and that, so I think it really becomes being versatile enough to yeah. be to where every position walks in, whether it's basketball, football, soccer, and says, I can get better here. Right. Period. They're not expecting us, soccer players not expecting us to teach them how to trap a ball and shoot a goal, right. but they are expecting us to make a more explosive, faster, better movement, right. better conditioning in order to be better when they get out to the soccer field. Yep. You know what I mean? So yep. long as we can commit to that and stay in that lane, mm -hmm. we're going to win every time. See, and that, that's what I like. You know, most people are like, well, uh, we have, you know, this machinery and that. No, but it's the mentality that you mentality come, what you come with. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if I'm playing the sport, the off season is the best best thing to get better right yeah best time because you you can solely focus on it yep. 
what gets you, what do you think an athlete of yours, how do you think they motivate themselves through it? Do you think it's, it's just the love of the sport or do you think it's the mentality that you implement here? Or a little bit of both? I think it has to be both. Um, I think the, um, the mentality is key because if you don't have the right mentality and that belief and confidence in yourself, it's hard to keep going for someone else. Yeah. And I see that a lot even with parents mm. because sometimes it's the parent that's driving the athlete, right. that's pushing them. I want you to be great. I want you to get a scholarship. And the kid's like, mm. I mean, I like baseball, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? But they're not all in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so at some point it has to become the mentality uh, of each individual athlete to be able to show up consistently. We train hard. Yeah. So for them to show up and get beat up five days a week in a training program, right. it's got to be a mentality. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I think the other piece, which I love about off seasons, it's the one time that you can focus exactly on what you need to do to get better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I always encourage my athletes to get with their coach, uh, even parent if they're a younger athlete, and create a list. What do I need to work on? Mm -hmm. And, and this and is how I tell them to ask the coach. Um, what do I need to do so that way when I come back, what do I need to do? People understand, don't get caught up in looking at, hey, well, he gets away with this. Well, you don't know what his calling is. Right. You know what I'm saying? What you're getting away with, God could ordain you to do that because you may have to deliver 10, 15,000 people that's been in that bondage. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so already, already that's knows. cool for you. Yeah. But for me, well, no, 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 because you got some, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You have a different role. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Already, so it, I'm, it's stuff right like that. You, yeah, man. it's stuff like that. I really try to like dial in and help people with this game. And I'm, I mean, especially, this is the thing that I, I think is, is vital though, is you helping the young ones and getting them, you know, straight from the jump. Because I've already, I've dealt with kids that at my old high school, I, I came back after I graduated, and some of them were so, almost so far gone, Right. it's hard to reel them in, but if you put them, hey, I tell my kids, you're a student athlete, student comes first, that's priority. You know what I mean? Yeah. I said, you can, you can get, you could be, you could be balling out there on the field, but if your grades ain't right, you ain't going nowhere. Yes. It'll cost you $10. Mm -hmm. I'm charging. For what? $2 an hour. It's electricity, it's the bill. All right, and then I'll just have for 10 yes, minutes. Sir. How much is that? Cash <laughs> 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 yeah, That's what you're talking about. Then. Hey, man, introduce <laughs> yourself on camera, bro. Hey, how you guys doing? I'm Jonathan Jones, operations manager here at Phase One Sports, also the director of the Phase One Sports Academy. Hey, we're doing some good things, big things over here. Mm -hmm. Stop by and join us. Check us out. Inspire somebody. Listen, whatever you do, okay, stay motivated on your goals. Set your goals, okay, and whatever they are, tend to those goals, stay focused on them, and remember you're only a failure when you stop. Ooh, that's fire. Mm -hmm. That's okay. fire. Mm -hmm. See, you got to stay clocked in. Never clocked out when we bring you this content. All right? Yep. So yes. Knock it out. Mm -hmm. Have a little fun. You like the boys or the girls more? Training. Be honest. And why? Girls are very focused and very detailed. Girls are very driven. Um, the boys, at times, you have to reel them in. Uh, they, they, their output is better, meaning they go hard, like they push themselves. But you got to spend a little bit more time babysitting and, and gathering and rounding them up and snapping your fingers and clapping your hands to get them to focus. ADHD kid. You know, yeah, you, gotta, you know, you got a lot more work as a trainer. But the, the girls I like, um, because like I said, they come in, they get it done. They usually come in a little more organized, meaning like I want to work on A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here. Well, boys are like, I just want to be better. Okay, right, what does that right, mean? Right. What does that mean? You might want to get better. Well, okay, better at what? Better at football. Okay, all right. <laughs> get a piece of paper. <laughs> let's go to the classroom. Yeah, let's go get to the whiteboard. To the whiteboard. We got work to do. All right, have a seat. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's that. I would say that's the difference. Yeah. Okay. So what? What in the community? What? What? Uh, here in Vegas. 
where do you see your your interactions, your relationship with the community? Like I know some businesses they they go to. Think about the Brooklyn. Uh -huh. They They're going all the way play. away. Nah, they ain't gonna be. Able to, they, they still can't beat the Lakers, man. Even with, with they, they got. What you say? I don't back. think they could beat the Lakers yet. Come on, man. They got Urban coming back, and you got KD. They got and no then big Harden, man Harden, now. hey, but Harden. They got no big they, man. They, they didn't even have Urban the other night, and they man. still came out with the dub. They, they, they got no. They, they at least going to the finals. At least going. To Get OG Reggie Hobson right here, 57 oh, years old, right shredded up, shredded up, I, I, I abbed was, up. But I'm getting there. I'm turning <laughs> this into the police department. <laughs> hey, that's the man right there, director of performance. What y'all doing? Been training for how long? 36 years starting this year. 36 that's years in the game. Woo! -hoo. Triple O. Long time. Man. Triple OG. Give us something. Inspire somebody today, man. Ooh, we inspire somebody. Yes, sir. The younger year, you, you wish you had. For my, for my, uh, what's been my slogan this year? Honestly, this year is just get up and go. Whatever you're doing, you better go do it right Ooh. now. Get up and go, go, go. Don't hesitate. Don't, don't wait. Get up and go. Do it right now. You see the uncertainty going around. So whatever it is you was thinking about, you better do it right now. Go. Facts. Get up and go right now. Yeah. Damn, I felt that. that. Damn, that was cool. That was great. <laughs> Come check Reggie out, man. Love, 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 feel me? <laughs> Come on, right, right. I'm about to go buy the camera today. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about it, God damn. <laughs> So y'all go ahead, that's a wrap, because I got work to do. <laughs> that part, that part. Let's get it. Yeah. Hey, man. All right, show me, don't tell me, baby. Clock in, not out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What you got All to say? day. Well, yeah. I'm clocked in. Never out. You know, show me. Don't tell me. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Let's drape it out.